secondo me è, oltre che un DJ è un grandissimo produttore e la musica che crea è arte e quindi non, non si parla di uh, house o, o altri tipi di musica lui riesce a fare tutto e tutto quello che fa lo rende musicalmente grandioso sento soltanto che i ritmi, le battute, tutto quello che c'è attorno l'orchestra che c'è dentro è sempre diversa dal solito e quello mi affascina tanto di lui perché riesce ad essere molto versatile il suo sound è molto ampio cioè, dentro la sua musica c'è eh, l'hip hop, il soul, il soul full cioè, comunque è tutta musica per l'anima e musica per l'amore perché lui comunque suona per trasmettere emozioni alle persone quello è il suo punto di, di arrivo è proprio casa sua, cioè lui quando viene in questo locale a suonare si sente proprio a casa, quindi diciamo che esprime il massimo di se stesso. Sono cresciuta naturalmente con la sua musica, sono cresciuta come dico io a pane e vega e così ho fatto crescere anche il mio cugino più piccolo, i miei amici e tutta la cerchia di fan che ora sono riuscita a creare in Italia e anche fuori. Infatti ci sono, diciamo, proprio in questi anni che sono cresciuta sia io eh, professionalmente che musicalmente, seguendo lui, seguendo la sua passione, seguendo il suo trasmettere l'amore per la musica, che è una cosa fondamentale che purtroppo oggi nei locali è andato un po' perdendosi, perché comunque i ragazzi di oggi non hanno più la cultura come, diciamo, un po' all'epoca di di amore e passione per la musica, di amore e passione per il DJ, quindi conoscere il DJ, conoscere che cosa fa, da dove proviene, le sue origini, perché comunque Vega alle spalle ha una storia musicale sia sua che della sua famiglia, di suo padre. Nei primi anni 90, Little Louis Vega incontra Kenny Dope Gonzalez e insieme formano il gruppo di produzione Masters at Work e insieme realizzeranno una serie di remix di grande successo per Madonna, Jamie Quay, Janet Jackson, Tito Puente, Nina Simone e per un lungo periodo viaggeranno in tutto il mondo con i loro DJ set. We made an album called When the Night is Over and uh, India, you know, at that time we did a lot of work together. She wrote a lot of the songs and sang a lot of the backgrounds. So when I was making the album, I brought Kenny, Kenny in because he was always making beats and everything, you know. So I said, Kenny, why don't you um, make some beats to some of these songs, you know? And as he was making the beats, I was playing keyboards and, you know, producing and stuff. And I started realizing that we really, like, connected, you know what I mean? When we were making music, we, we really connected. If I would come up with a groove and play a bass line and, and chords, he would do the beat that would be perfect underneath it. We decided to start a, pr a production company, and I said, man, we need a name, we need a name. I mean, and Kenny says, well, I have this name that I used in, you know, with my friends in the neighborhood. It's called Masters at Work. I said, that's perfect. I said, I love it. Let's use Masters at Work. And in the next few years, I mean, by that time, we worked with, you know, on records for, you know, Madonna, Michael Jackson, like, you know, so many different artists in the 90s. Janet Jackson, like everybody, and, um, you know, uh, Jamiroquai. The Masters at Work sound reached the UK, Italy, France, and everybody wanted to hear us, you know. When we came out, we did the Ministry of Sound, 
which was amazing. And so many people, I think, from you know the entire music business came down to hear what Masters at Work would sound like live, you know, DJing. <laughs> It was everything because, you know, uh, the thing is that what Kenny and I did was we put anything from hip hop to R&B, jazz, Brazilian, African, we brought it all into house music, those influences. It's very unique. I mean, you know, it's DJing is something that is very special. I mean, you, you're able to bring feelings out of the people and at the same time a lot of people you know uh, you can make them happy you know you can make them more aggressive you can make them you know just feel enlightened or a feeling of relief feeling of forgetting all your problems at least for that one night you know I, I think that um, you know, it's been a big part of my life. It's, it's, it's all my life. I mean, you know, I started when I was 13, so you're talking about, you know, 32 years of it. Abbiamo seguito Vega in occasione della Amsterdam Dance Event, un famoso festival di musica elettronica, dove è stata organizzata una festa per celebrare i 100 brani prodotti dalla sua etichetta, fondata nel 2003, la Vega Records. Vega arriva ad Amsterdam in compagnia della sua seconda moglie, la cantante Anane. We just arrived from New York City. We're in Amsterdam and we're here for the ADE event, which is a big music convention. It's been going on for many years. And we're here to have a party at Little Buddha, which is a club here in Amsterdam. There's no time for a nap right now, you know. We just came straight from uh, New York City. So how do you like the place? It's really cute. It is, right? There are now many countries around the world making house music, playing house music, playing dance music, and uh, so many clubs around the world. As to her before, I mean, you know, we were just in New York and that was it. You know, now you can go to Africa and play music and people know the music, you know, I mean, but you have to thank now the, you know, the internet, which allows a lot of people to learn, you know, um, about other artists and, 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 and their music. We, we never thought that we were gonna travel to all these other countries and places around the world and play in front of thousands of people. We never knew that. I met Anane in the 90s, in the, the late 90s, at a place called the Sound Factory Bar, which is a club I used to play at in New York City. And I met her through some mutual friends. I was a really big fan of Louis, and uh, I lived four hours away. And uh, myself and my friends used to drive four hours to come see him at Sound Factory Bar. <laughs> I have to say Sound Factory Bar was one of the most uh, incredible clubs in New York City at that time. You know, you walk in and there's big red velvet curtains and Willie Ninja, may he rest in peace, was at the door. And when you open up, it was just incredible music and Louis at the DJ booth. We were very attracted to one another and felt a very good chemistry and decided to give it a try. And so we started to date and hang out a little bit more and it was perfect. <laughs> we fell in love and, uh, you know, we, uh, we traveled around the world. We had wonderful times and, uh, you know, Anane is a very special person. I wasn't DJing or singing when I met Louis. I was a model and uh, an actress uh, in New York City and uh, studying theater. But I did come to New York to pursue music because I come from a musical family. I open the door. Hey, what you come here for? To scare me down. For me.
me, uh, an artist has, has to have something really special. Uh, in Anani's case, uh, the wonderful thing about her is that uh, she's a singer, songwriter, she's a DJ, and she sings in different languages. For me as a producer, I mean, I've produced many artists for over 20 years. And I'd have to say, you know, I never really produced a reggae song. And with Anani, I was able to experience that and, and uh, you know, cross boundaries that I've never crossed before. I never knew that she sang or she wrote songs. I mean, we were together for like five years. You know, we were together for five years and then she says, you know, I write songs and, and, and poetry and and I could write melodies, and, and I sang. And I said, really? And I said, why didn't you tell me before? And she's funny, she's like, you know, uh, I didn't want you to think I was a hoochie mama trying to get a record deal. <laughs> well, I knew before that anyway. But I said, you know, she's definitely the one for me, man. She, she really loves me. And so Louis was really surprised that I can write, but I also write in a different language, and I write in my Cape Verdean language um, or Portuguese. <laughs> So uh, we decided to put the, the song for the Elements of Life album. Tonight in Amsterdam is going to happen, you know, we're going to have a good time. You know, it's more showcasing a lot of music and new sounds and as well as maybe one or two, you know, back in the days jams. But, uh... Anani will perform as well. So it's going to be a wonderful night, great music. And uh, we have three albums coming on Vega Records. You know, uh, one is out now, which is Anani's World. And then we have uh, Elements of Life 2, you know, uh, which is my new production coming next year. Point, there's just going to be people every, hopefully, everywhere. Yeah. You know, so they're going to come from all ends. Yeah. Okay. But I told them to at least pull it out so that we can have a little more, you know, Okay. Walk out room. Okay. It's gonna start with Antonello, then Anane, then myself, and she goes on during my set, and right. then Body goes on, and you guys go on during his set. Right. Or if you want to hang a little bit, we'd have to work out that room situation. I'll speak to Fleur about it. Okay. Okay. In 2003, I put out an album called Elements of Life, and I started a record label called Vega Records. And um, the label was created so that I could put out all of my Elements of Life singles and, and, and projects. You know, once I put the band together, which consisted of a lot of musicians that I've used for many, many years, I started rehearsing with the band. I was naturally directing the band in the rehearsal. So when I spoke to the band, I said, guys, when you get on stage, you guys got to know this music. And they said, what do you mean when we get on stage? You're not going to get on stage with us? I said, no, I'm not a musician. I'm not going to play. What am I going to do? <laughs> Jump around? You know, and they said, no, Louis, you can direct us. 